So howdy, Reed Desert Boy here. You know, he did a video recently about if 9mm is so great, where's all the 38, you know? So let's talk about that for a minute. What might make the 38 such a great round to have for a weapon that's capable of chambering that? So today we're going to take a look at a few different ones that uh, that I have as a hobbyist and enthusiast and talk about kind of what roles they might fulfill and uh, what makes them flexible and uh, useful. And uh, as you can see there, we've got a Colt, we've got a, a Ruger LCR, and we've got a Smith & Wesson. And so in no particular order, we'll talk about them and uh, some of the things that we carry them in, the holsters, and also, you know, speed loaders and speed strips. So, so let's take a look and uh, learn a little more. So here's another look at them out of the cases from bottom to top. The Colt Detective Special and 38 Special, the Ruger LCR and 357 Magnum, and the Smith & Wesson Model 686 uh, Performance Center in 357 Magnum. So very quickly, let's perform a safety check. This is the Colt. One thing different about the Colt is that it pulls back. We open it up and we can see that there are no rounds in here. So we can see that it is empty. The Ruger has a push button, which you push right here. And the cylinder comes out, and we can see that it is empty. And uh, if we take the Smith & Wesson, it, uh, of course, trying to do this backwards, it slides forward, and then it comes out. And we can see it's also unloaded. Normally, I press on the crane, or some people call this the yoke. I don't normally press on the cylinder, so... Um, <clears throat> We've done that, we know they're all unloaded. So let's try to come back and uh, continue our discussion then. And we'll look at holsters. This happens to be a DeSantis outside the waistband thumb brake holster. This is what I chose for the uh, Colt Detective Special. It's got a thumb brake on it. It's outside the waistband, it snaps on there, keeps retention, but it also protects the hammer. You pull that off, draw the weapon. Um, for this gun, I thought that was a good choice because this is a little heavier. And I find this, I haven't carried this enough to really evaluate this yet. And I'm still working on, because of the th limited 38 special ammo, which I was able to acquire some recently, I will be taking the Colt to the range and uh, kind of finishing out my... Um, getting a more comfortable level with it. Not that I'm not now, but I just want to be more proficient with it uh, before I start carrying it regularly. Okay, for the Ruger, because I, I wear it concealed so much, I do have this um, inside the waistband um, holster for it, for the Ruger LCR. So you can see this is a crossbreed. I happen to like this double clip. This is a super tuck, if I remember right, and uh, works very well. And it keeps it very close. Over time, what happens is these holsters start to kind of mold to your body. Um, once again, as I said before, because I've had that one the longest, um, I have other holsters. I do have also a kind of a friction type holster and it just happens it does fit the the Colt Detective Special as well but uh, I use primarily for my Ruger LCR just like with my Smith & Wesson it's one of the first holsters I got because it's uh, one I could find but, but it was the one I actually got first was this one which was a Galco just a leather outside the waistband holster I use them for different reasons um, the, the, this, the friction holster like this, which I'll also show for the S&W, those are generally, 
the pros to them is that you know they're they're they fit inside the waistband you don't have anything that connects it and everything it's supposed to hold inside the waistband when you when you draw your weapon you have to practice with it that way uh, to become proficient at you can't really reholster uh, very well with that the other thing is is if you're wearing it uh, and uh, you have to go into somewhere for any personal needs and things like that you got to make sure as I've talked about before with those holsters that you keep track of them because your weapon is in that so that's something that's kind of a con to it the other holsters in general you know usually they're attached to your belt uh, depending on your situation your weapons probably in there just depends on your situation but um, with the other ones because they're not attached you have to really pay attention to make sure that they're fitting correctly and that nothing's going on there uh, with that so okay. let's talk about the Smith & Wesson because this is such a heavy gun and everything, I want to buy a nice custom leather holster for it. Crossbreed already contacted them. They don't have unfluted holster Kydex leather combinations right now. They don't have those molds yet. So for right now, I was able to find a friction type holster. I got this particular, it's probably made for a gun a little bit longer, but it does cover the hammer. In my case, I like it for me. That's my preference. You would have to decide for yourself, do your own research. But this Black Hawk one works well, and it's a friction holster. It fits down inside. It's a little, because um, when it's fully loaded, you know, you've got seven rounds of ammunition on top of the 34 ounces. So it's probably getting up there about 40 ounces. We're in it just for a couple of days, kind of around the house or just, you know, around my neighborhood and stuff. Um, it was comfortable enough. It got to where I didn't really notice that it was there. Kind of like my Ruger one, but um, overall, this is still, um, I prefer to have a regular inside the waistband or outside the waistband holster for this. I'll probably get a pancake holster from um, Simply Rugged Holsters because that has the ability to be inside or outside. And if you buy the chesty polar harness they have, if you wanted to have a chest ring, you could use it for that. So, so to kind of wrap it up, once again, my videos are way longer than they should be. Um, what do I primarily use them for? This is my primary concealment weapon, even over my uh, semi-autos. I mean, the P938 is probably my other one that I use. Those two are pretty much the two that I use for all my summer, winter, um, more or less deep concealment kind of things because they're the smallest, lightest ones that I have. Um, this one here was to give me the advantage of an additional round plus have a single action pull. And, uh, you know, it's a little heavier, so... Um, it, although it, it's not capable of firing 357 or it's not um, rated to fire a lot of plus P, it's 38 special nowadays with modern ammunition can be very effective. And I just, you know, wanted to have a double action, single action uh, pistol with one more round. So those were both meant for carry, um, in my case. So, um, Let's look at the Smith & Wesson uh, Performance Center 686. Why did I purchase this gun? Well, because I wanted something that had 357 uh, capability, and uh, it's also concealable. The other thing is, is that, uh, yes, it does have adjustable sights, which sometimes can be, you have to make sure they don't snag. That's one thing you gotta kinda check out, and make sure it fits the holster okay. Uh, the other thing is, is that, uh, this would also fit like a chest rig, you know, because some people carry that. Let's say you would go fishing even. A lot of people like to have a gun like that in the woods because you might have waders on or you're using both your arms to go fishing. This gives you uh, another way to pull it out uh, more easily. Um, this, but I see it more as woods protection, so it's kind of walking in the woods kind of gun. Um, so this was meant to be a multi-purpose, but be able to handle the full power rounds that out of the LCR, it's just not that comfortable shooting those. So that's why I got the different ones. Um, you can see there's a variety of different holsters inside the waistband, outside the waistband. 
uh, different things like that. You have to make your own decision about what works for you best. Um, and so do some do some checking. But once again, my main purpose was I had a little resurgence in people looking at the video again about if nine millimeters so great and where's all the 38? Well, this is why there's where's all the 38 is because the 38 happens to be a very good defensive round. And uh, there's a lot of different platforms out there. So a lot of old ones and new ones. And in addition to that and used ones, uh, the 357 Magnum uh, capable weapons uh, generally chamber the uh, 38 Special, the 38 Special Plus P as well. So that was what I wanted to kind of get to the bottom of with doing this and just to kind of show people why you might have uh, different ones is why people might have bought more than one 38. They might have different reasons for them. So as Free Desert Boy always says, be safe out there, whatever you're doing. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.